This is part 34 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss generating a drop-down list control using HTML helpers. Please watch part 33 before proceeding. To generate a drop-down list, we use drop-down list HTML helper. A drop-down list in MVC is a collection of select list item objects. Depending on our project requirement, we may either hard-code the values in code or retrieve them from a database table. Let's say for example, we want to generate this department's drop-down list. First, let's discuss generating this drop-down list using hard-coded values. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we are going to make use of drop-down list HTML helper. And if you look at this HTML helper, it has got several overloaded versions. I'm going to use the overloaded version where we specify the name for the drop-down list and then the list of items that we want within the drop-down list and then an option label. So if you look at the usage of this overloaded version, notice that you know we are specifying departments as the name for the drop-down list. And then within this drop-down list, we want three departments, ID, HR, payroll. And you know we are passing that list as an I enumerable of select list item objects. So we are creating a new list of select list item objects. And notice that within that list, we have um, you know three select list item objects. And notice the text property that's going to be the name of the department and value is going to be the ID of the respective department. And then when this drop-down list renders, we want IT department to be selected. So we are setting selected property to true. And within this drop-down list, we want the first option as select department. We are passing that as the third parameter. So the first parameter is going to be the name for the drop-down list which is departments and the second parameter is going to be the list of select list item objects so I have this already typed to speed things up so let's copy that and paste it as the second parameter and the third parameter is going to be the option that you want as the first option within the drop-down list which is select department so let's go ahead and pass that as the third parameter and we want IT department to be selected when the drop-down list renders so I'm going to set selected property of this select list item object to true with these changes let's go ahead and run this and as you might expect when the drop-down list renders you know IT department should be selected and notice that select department is the first um, option within the drop-down list but the downside of hard coding drop-down list values like this within code is that whenever we have to add or remove a department from this drop-down list, then we will have to change the code. But then once we change the code, we have to test it and we have to deploy it to our production server. So obviously this is going to be a bit time consuming. So in reality, in most cases, we actually get the values from a database table. And for the purposes of this demo, to retrieve data from the database table, we're going to make use of Entity Framework. We discussed working with Entity Framework in parts 8 and 25 of this video series. So since we want to use Entity Framework to retrieve uh, data from the database table, uh, the first step is to actually add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. But before that, um, we're going to make use of this table, TBL Department. And notice that this table is present in the sample database. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's right click on the models folder and add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And we are going to call this Sample Data Model. Let's click Add and we want to generate the model from the database. So let's select that and click Next. And let's call, um, you know, let's save our connection string as Sample DB Context. So Sample DB context let's click next now this is going to connect to the sample database and it's going to retrieve all the tables views and stored procedures that are present in that database and we want only this department table so I'm going to select that and you know the entity framework is going to generate an entity for that table but then we want our entities to be residing in models namespace so I'm going to change the model namespace as models and click finish. So this is going to generate a department entity for us based on that table, T 
TBL department. But look at this, Entity Framework names it as TBL department. That's the name of the entity. But we want our entity to be as department. So I'm going to get rid of that TBL prefix. OK. So now let's go back to our controller. OK. So now if you look at how we are going to retrieve the list of departments, look at that. We are creating an instance of sample DB context. Now the Entity Framework has automatically generated a class for us with that name sample db context and that's going to reside look at the namespace mbc demo dot models and if you look at the context here we have that class sample db context okay so let's go to our controller let's import that namespace mbc demo dot models and within our index action method, we are going to create an instance of that sample DB context. Let's call it DB. So this class will help us connect to the database, uh, to the sample database, okay? Um, and then retrieve the department. So this object has got departments property, which is going to return all the departments that are present within this table. Now using that department list we want to build our select list item objects and the way we are going to do is using this class look at that this class has got a constructor where we give it let's actually look at that in action so once we retrieve the departments we are going to store those departments in a view bag object so view bag and I'm going to use a dynamic property let's call it departments so we are going to uh, store the departments within that property. And then I'm actually going to create an instance of new, I mean, select list class. And notice that I'm going to use this constructor where we can specify, you know, our list of items using which we want to build a select list. Okay. And that list is going to be departments list from this object. And then obviously you are passing the list of departments. But another thing that we need to specify is what is going to be the data value field and what is going to be the data text field. Remember when we were specifying the values, hard, uh, you know, by hard coding them, we specified a text and value property of the select list item object. Similarly, um, you know, we have to specify, you know, data value field and data text field. Data value field is going to be the ID property of the department entity, and you know, text is going to be the name property of again the department class. Okay, so let's go ahead and specify that. Data value field is going to be that, and data text field is going to be name property. And then we return to the view. And within the index, all we need to do is we don't have to hard code, you know, the select list item objects now. So the, the name is going to be departments, and I can get rid of these two there. And the first option within the drop down list I wanted as select department. Okay, so with this change, let's go ahead and run this. And as you might expect, the behavior should be the same. It should render a drop down list with all those, um, you know, with the list that is retrieved from the database table. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.